Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have Matthew Bassard. We discuss how the image can fool some, how someone's image can fool somebody. What tone of your voice shows that you're attractive, and which athletes are the sexiest? Um, don't forget to uh, sign up for the Patreon. It's Patreon.com/slash Manschool202. Um, support us so that we can uh, keep doing this. I appreciate you guys. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. I've been great. Thank you for having me back. It's good to see you, man. It's really, it's always, I always get a warm feeling when I see you, bro. It's Same. Just, yeah. It's I'm a just, nice thing, you know? That's yeah. Not often. <laughs> I wasn't like, I'm going to I'm gonna come here to podcast. I'm like, oh, I get to talk to Dante. Yeah. yeah. We always have fun. Well, that's what it is. That's yeah. kind of what it is. Um, we, we've always had... Uh, really great philosophical conversations about comedy and stuff. Yeah. And uh, like you're, you're a real deep thinker in that, you know, like you just don't, it's, it's just like, I, I like, and I don't want to say that in a way that it doesn't sound like you're very organic and natural, but I mean, perspectively, you look at it, you look at the, what we do is, is very, uh, there, there's, a, there's a right way to do it. I think there is a uh, a rubric for what can make it better. Yeah. I try to not. I mean, I, I don't want to. Formulas are great. I don't want to sound formulaic. Right, right. And and the whole thing is to identify those patterns so that you, hopefully you can break them. And you're, a, you're a math dude. I like math. Yeah, I studied math. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's, I like math. <laughs> it's not. The, oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's rare. Yeah. It's very, it's weirdly isolating thing. Like, yeah, because it's not a thing you can even like hardcore science can be yeah. entertaining. Yeah. Math is I'm a big so science. Dry. Dude. Yeah. I'm a big yeah. science, too. Um, I watch all those those physics videos now uh, of YouTube. So great. You can learn anything. Oh, uh, yeah. YouTube now. Yeah. At least That's get a, a sample. Harry always makes fun of me because my yeah. uh, my my scope of entertainment is either uh is either a very high brow or just very like low dark brow. matter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or Maury Povich. Like yeah. it's, <laughs> it's either. I, I was watching this documentary. You about, are not the matter. Yeah. It's, it's like it's Little People's Week on Jerry Springer. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's it's an interesting thing. But one of, one of the things that's been, been becoming more evident because I mean you know the show's a relationship show for the most part. Uh, but what I what I I really I, I think the the focus is relationships, but I think there are these cosmic and universal laws and 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 things that I think uh, apply to everything. Yes, like even when you talk about comedy, comedy is kind of a, the audience is a lot like a woman. Very much. I mean, you want to. It's like your intro says, yeah. and this is something you do very well: is make people feel like they're in good hands. Yeah. Make people feel safe and protected. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, you know, I love joke writing. I love your performance. But the number one thing you really have to do is make people feel like you got it. Yeah, you got it. It's you, cool. You, you, you know relax. what you're doing here. You, yeah. You know Otherwise, it's doing. just not fun to watch. It's a lot of uh, I find comedy is a lot of gaining and con containing their trust. Right. Because it could go bad, especially when you got young, when you're doing shows with just random people, different yeah. skill levels. Someone could really wreck the room. So yeah. part of it is getting their trust that you are funny mm -hmm. so that they can relax and go along with right. you. Like, so they don't have to worry like, oh, this guy's funny. Like if you can do it early well, on, know, they're, yeah, they're it's more they're ready are they are to laugh. It's an interesting thing. Like when you get some actors who start like consummate actors and they start doing comedy and they approach it very differently. And a lot of times the energy that they create, like, um, and, and I think he's a funny dude, um, uh, Rappaport, Michael Rappaport. Mm, yes. He's a funny dude, but he will fuck up a room. Like, Interesting. I have not seen him perform live. The energy, like they love him and he does well, but the energy that he he leaves the room with is 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 very unlike stand up comedy energy. Do you know what I mean? Can you expand? Uh, like he does these long, he does rants. Like uh -huh. he'll just rant. Blah, 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 blah. Is it freestyle? Or does he actually have the words planned? Uh, a little bit of both. A I little bit say. of both. But a lot of. I mean, he's still young. As you know, he's only been doing this a, little, a short a period standard. of time. Yeah. But but no, it's. I don't think it's planned, and I think that's the the fact that it goes in in so many directions uh, doesn't give the the crowd an opportunity to follow. Do you know what I mean? I I, th I think so. Well, okay. Here's something I say all the time. I say uh, the 
audience is dumb and brilliant in the same breath. I can understand right. that. Yes. So they'll they'll follow the breadcrumbs wherever you take them. Uh-huh. But you got to have the breadcrumbs in an integral place where they need to be so that they can follow. Okay, so is it maybe his content that just leaves the crowd kind of like it's, they didn't get a meal, they got a lot of spices but no meal? Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. Not understanding the meat of it, mm-hmm. and so they're la- they're they like it's almost like he's ranting, which is really interesting the way he does it in such a, uh, a you know a, a stream way. of consciousness yeah. Oh, yeah. because he's an interesting person. But not having the fundamental basic structure is so it feels like spices with no meal. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I think we 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 take people on a on a ride, and then when we're done. They go, oh, huh? That, yeah. You know, that was palatable. You know what I mean? That was right. great. Whereas it, it, when it's all over the place, they don't know right. that, that it's over. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I mean, it just, it sounds like narrative arc. It's just like a story structure. It's a good and, point. And that's the thing. Like, I spend a lot of time really focused on jokes and which lines get the laughs and which words get the laughs. Yeah. But you still but need that's to the be mathematician you, and Right. You, and I forget that sometimes you, cause I'll write, I write so many jokes, but I realize very few of them work on stage because they need to have some personal attachment, some interest, yeah. and usually vulnerability. Yeah. And you have to be driving it along with a story, yeah. which you can't, you don't get like, you know, like laughter is like this decibel reader, like right. pop, pop, right. pop. I'm hitting that every 12 seconds, great. Right. Every 20 seconds, whatever. But you can't read when you're losing their attention. You right. can't read when, you're, read when you're losing their interest. Right. You got to feel it. I, I just find yeah. something I think, you know, I've been doing it 21 years and I will not do a joke that I am not emotionally attached to. Yes. It, it will I, suffer in the performance. Yeah. And, the crowd and, and I can pull it off because I could drag that dead body over the, over the, over the finish <laughs> line because I have enough skills to do that. But there's an <laughs> authenticity in the fact that you – Stay authentic. You talk about the stuff yeah. that you don't get. Like I do a writer's workshop and I'll do with like, I'll have like 15 kids on, on, on zoom mm-hmm. and we'll, and they'll spit it out. And, uh, and a lot of times I'll ask him, what is the joke about? Like, what do you want? What are you trying to say? Right. Because there's no direction. Mm-hmm. And, and it's funny, like relationships are very much the same way. If there is no direction, I mean, how often you like a woman will go, well, where is this going? Like, mm-hmm. where, you know, she wants to understand that there's a clear direction and there's a, the body. And they, like you said, they feel like they're in good hands. And without that, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's difficult. You, there's a nervousness about that. Yes. Like you, you call an Uber driver and he spends five minutes trying to get out into the traffic because he's just not confident in you. Now you're uncomfortable because he's uncomfortable. And the only, re- only thing you know about him, you, anything you know about him, he told you. Yeah. In his body language, in his action, the way he the way he handles the steering wheel or the right. way he pulls the out. Words and, are five percent of yeah. what he tells you about himself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that is um something uh, that I think is very similar to comedy, but it 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 it, it kind of, you know, in a job situation, in a work situation, mm-hmm. if you job interview or whatever, you people want to know that you know what at least that you believe that you you you've uh you know what you're doing. I, yeah, I just took a voice acting class. Oh, wow. And all he taught us is that if you think you're doing it wrong, you are. If you're doubting yourself in any way, that's going to come through. Okay. That's going to okay. show no matter how microscopic hmm. of, of, an, uh, of a feeling it is, it will, it will come through just even in your voice. Imagine physically, yeah. you're physical yeah. acting. And, and if you believe in it, that doesn't make it correct, yeah. but it has a lot better chance. If you just think you know what you're doing, right, most right. people trust you. And that's just exactly what, what attraction is, what, yeah. what, what, you know, uh, game. Yeah. If that's not, not yeah, fair enough. I mean, you know what I mean? If, just, if, you, if you look like you're in control, I trust you. if someone, you know, it's like when those people walk out on the street to start dancing and they start unfolding mats and clapping. Yeah. Like, I bet you got that. What if they just, then they try to do a backfill and <laughs> broke their neck, fell down. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just so confident. That would be the end. It. Yeah. I tip. I tip them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, you, you said you took a, a voice acting. What, what's some of the things that you learned from the voice acting thing that, cause I'm always looking for the connections and I, I'll tell you why I'm thinking about this. The connections, uh, there were two major things to take away was, um, again, don't doubt yourself. Don't, mm-hmm. there's going to be a voice in your mind that goes, Oh, that was a little, that was a little. And by the time you're thinking about that, you've lost, them. you've lost it. And then now you fucked up the next thing. And it's just that dumb, 
dumb belief in yourself. It is stupid to believe in yourself. Right. But if you can turn off that filter, mm -hmm. you're going to actually be more successful. It's counterintuitive. It's, I think it's what made Trump. But I, he never well, second guessed himself. Yeah, yeah, he never yeah. did. Yeah. That's, that's that the problem. Crazy. That is yeah. the problem. That was a big <laughs> problem. But I, I mean, all of show business is ego. All of, yes. I mean, the whole thing, if you think about it, is a little bit egotistical. Even, yes. Even just so doing salesmanship though. Yeah, yeah. There's salesmanship, but there is just the odds of succeeding in it like mm -hmm. it's all it's all ego and uh, like even stand up the uh, the notion of stand up the idea the that these hubris. people it's, it's insane these it's people insane. want to hear what i know they need to hear <laughs> what i have to say and not only that we're gonna charge them for it and they have to sit quietly and quietly mm -hmm. you know how hard it is to keep my attention for yeah. one minute <laughs> but that's it's just an insane the whole idea is belief in yourself because yeah. the also also the thing i think is really insane about our business is that you people avoid being judged moreover than that. from the time you're introduced to the time you get on stage you are being judged every second of every moment on stage and from people who know little if anything about you mm -hmm. until you tell them and then and yeah in some way they have a say yeah the matter oh, well yeah and then we navigate this 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 laughter and then we do it again. Like you, you get up stage mm -hmm. and, and and not even do it again in terms of a set, but every joke is a judgment that you have to be strong enough to say, yeah, I, mean, I can, I can do this. Yeah. And every time you think they're not judging you, they are. Yeah. And then, and even when it doesn't work, you got to have sure they're judging. Yeah. Your yeah. hands. Yeah. Everything is, I remember when I first started doing comedy, um, funny dude out in LA his name is Matty Goldberg and he was oh yeah really really yeah. nervous much when he was younger he was really nervous kid he actually had a brain tumor and he had brain surgery and so he was a short dude Jewish kid glasses just very like unassuming and he used to he was so nervous he would talk on the mic and as he was talking on the mic he would wrap the the cord around his arm like this was like his like, he fill was, in, like he was it, a rabbi it, yeah, yeah it was it was insane but it, it's it's so interesting how that the, all of these things kind of translate um and I mean, you know, you've been on the show before and, you know, we talk about ace and, or, you know, telling the truth, credibility, authenticity, credibility and empathy. And it's funny, a, a guy, a friend of mine called me up like this is, I do the consultations and he goes, yeah, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with this girl and, and uh, she broke up with me uh, by, via text message. So the, so. I heard it the first time and he said, yeah, it was no big thing. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really, hey, didn't see her for a while. And then she hit me with this text and broke up. With me. And I go like, you, you, you're a little upset because she broke up with you on text yeah, message. Text, yeah. And and I think the, the ego comes into that because it's like, how dare you? How dare you? Bro but if she broke up in your face, it would have been the same thing. I go, well, what did she break up for you for? She goes, um, you, I feel like you don't put me as a priority and I feel like um, you use your uh, you use your job you know, like he's a musician an and a promoter and stuff as an excuse not to be with me. Hmm. And uh, he That's goes, and very then she's, normal. And, then, and she was like, yeah, when you and you, you know, and, and she keeps thinking I'm sleeping with this girl who who I did a video. She, she shot a music video in his house and he keeps I go, yeah, but you're sleeping with somebody else. Like, right. like she didn't get the, she didn't ring the bell, but she she definitely was the bloodhound on the trail. She knew. And you do use your you do use your job for excuses. You've always no, I'm not really with her. I go. <laughs> Even you, the words you come in, not really with her means. Not really. Yeah, of course it's you not, do. No. Right. It's not. not no. Really. It's not definitive. And and if you want to be trustworthy, the definition of being trustworthy, is, untrustworthy, is somebody who's only trustworthy half of the time, or even ninety percent of the time. Those people are still trust. It's you. Literally, got to be all or nothing. And I think when you see comics, comics that really command the audience is because they're emotionally present in that moment and there's no denying that you know yeah and they, it's we we humans even the dumbest of us can sm smell you have to slightest, an instinct. Uh, yeah. what's that called uncanny yeah that way inconsistency it, incongruency yeah where we can i can tell you're just a little bit detached from what you're saying and it ruins the whole charade uh I, yeah the I other agree thing with that. i learned was that confidence 
also needs to start before you start recording. You walk in, it needs, you can't be like, uh, is the mic in the right level? You see, everything's perfect. Everything right. you choose to do, you can't second get. You can't ask them. And he, he made that point. He was the, the, the teacher was a, a casting director as well. Mm-hmm. And he, I'm not, these aren't, weren't his words, but it's kind of mm-hmm. like, I'm stupid enough to fool. So fool me. Right. Even me, who's been doing this for years, if you, if it looks like you know what you're doing and you yeah. don't make any huge, obvious blunders, yeah. I'm going to assume you know I'm going to assume doing, you know what's yeah. up. You may you have ever, never actually done this ever, work before. This has happened to me a couple times. You ever uh, see a guy in a suit at like a function of some kind and you ask them like questions or you think they're in charge of everything because mm-hmm. they're wearing a suit and yeah. then they start talking and, and I realize like, that they're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. And you're like, oh shit, he fooled me because he looked good in the suit. He cleaned up. I thought he had some power or authority or knew well, what was because going we, on. Because it's it, we, we have these these subconscious connections to a sure. guy that looks yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. there was a guy on, on my, on, 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 at the phone company job. And this dude, he had like, you know, Bogoyevich. Yes. Rob Bogoyevich. He had the from, Bogoyevich uh, hair and like, like your tone here, Bogoyevich hair talk. He had the classic Senate white Oreo. guy, yeah. white guy, New England, white guy voice, voice. And, uh, and I just saw, oh, man, this guy. And then I'm talking to this guy. He goes, that's not fair. I go, yeah, but nothing's fair. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not going to put up with that. I was like, this guy's a fucking idiot. But just the the image of who he was made me go, this is a smart guy. Yeah. I didn't even question it. Like, I, even when I questioned it, I my brain kept wanting, no, no. I mean, maybe I don't understand. Maybe it's, he doesn't understand I'll, this section of it. Yeah, or maybe yeah, yeah. It's not his expertise. Yeah. <laughs> This might be your joke already, but do you have that thing where if you stand too close to the front of the bar, people show you their IDs? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's what the perception is, which was really, um, which is what I was going to say when you were talking about the voice acting. Um, in terms of attractiveness, your voice is very, very important. It's like I don't even think that people understand it. And I'm not just because of the, uh, the fact that there's, um, you know, people have those deep kind of velvety mm-hmm. voices. Yeah, that's true too. But there is a your tone. A, a, your tone matters. Sure, your tone. On what you're saying, yeah. Tempo. The tempo. The tempo. Um, Barry Ribs used to always drive me crazy. I don't know if you know Barry. Barry's an older comic, yeah. but he takes hours to get through a sentence. Yeah. And, and until you know him, you know he's not talking shit. He's he's, he's not saying nothing. But in the in the because he takes so long, you just you're waiting for the. You know, wow, what this is going to be profound, and then it's not. But then, then you feel betrayed because it's not. Which is another thing is it's that kind of buyer's remorse. You yeah. know, like you, you sold me this and it wasn't what it was, and you just you sold me a shitty bag of goods. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's weird. It wasn't thing. worth uh, it. Wasn't worth the wait. So next yeah. time I'm going to be more leery. Um, tone of voice, speed. There isn't this. You might find interesting. I listened to there was a study on do women talk more than men. Because there's that stereotype that women talk more. Okay. Uh, and what they broke it down is it's women may, if women talk more, it might be because of status. It's in, in a situation where a person with high status and low status interact, the person with low status tends to talk more, talk more. in an right. attempt to gain respect yeah. or, or out of a sense of insecurity. You're selling it. Almost What's like that? you're selling yourself. Like you're selling yourself. Whereas right. a person who's already has status in some situation doesn't feel the need that they have to. Have you gone to a place where you're one of the bigger cats there? And yeah, yeah. You, you don't have to say as much. Yeah, you're not even. You just kind of hang on your every word when yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 because of status dynamics between men and women in the workplace, that might might cause women to be perceived as talking more. Yeah, I yeah. talk much more than my girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> she hates it. Really, I'm this stream of consciousness. And she's more reserved than I get on her nerves. But a do lot. you do you think also that that's that's the, maybe probably the creative element in you as well? Do you know what I mean? That you that's the ADD that I'm I'm, okay. I'm constantly going from distracted nonlinear thoughts and I'm you know to thought and um, but I'll I'll just talk about the most mundane things to her and mm. she's like why are we talking about this I'm like yeah yeah that is a very important <laughs> story yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, also, I you know, there's a as there's a thing. So, like, I've I've said this before that when uh, um, if whenever you I'd say whenever you break up with your girlfriend, uh, getting over it is is five pussies away, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's uh it's an interesting thing because of the fact that we get so programmed into the relationship that the 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 woman that you're with, 
she breaks up with you, but you, there is a, she is the stimulus. Her smell, her tone, mm-hmm. her her the way she looks, how she talks, how she moves, and so we represent those things. Especially if we are into them, we rep- they represent this sexuality, this attractiveness, and so on and so forth. And when you break up with somebody, it's almost like you're programmed to those stimulus. Her yeah. the tone of her voice. I mean, we yeah, all the smell of her shampoo means sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of those things become subconscious in the way we link them together. Together. Um, and when you break up with somebody, you, you, like a lot of people will go, oh, I'm, I'm just going to get into me. I'm going to delve into me and find you, you get back on the horse. You got to get because even the fact of you when you start to the first time, the first time you sleep with somebody, it's always super awkward because you're still getting over this and you're not really focused in that. You're trying to bridge the the, the, the uh, you're trying to bridge the gap. The second time it. it it's like, oh, it was all right, but it was, you know, something different. And you start to, but it starts to break that. It's almost like you get a reboot. Mm-hmm. The third one, when you have, and you're not, hopefully you're not still having sex with her, you know, because then you're reinforcing that. But the third one is like you those you, it's almost like you reboot and the things that you find attractive or sexy starts to change because now you have other options where you didn't have options yeah. before. You know, yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, it's, a, it's an, it, but the, but the voice, but there is. I used to tell us to do this all the time. It's like in terms of seduction, there is a way that you talk, that we talk. There's a might be a breathy voice, or it might be deeper, it might be whatever the fuck it is. But the, we're communicating like sexual desire whether we realize it or not, because I mean, it's just automatic. And the way we, if you replicate that same cadence and that same tone, even when you're, uh, even when you, if you're talking about sports, it still has the same thing because the, the subtext is communicated underneath what you're talking if, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yes. You know, they've, they've done exercises and things and studies. Like I saw this one study, it's like a study, it's online. I can't call things on TikTok studies, even if they're like done <laughs> by like a scientist, but a guy put a square in a subway, you know, busy subway, uh, whatever you call it, station. And uh, so his whole mission was to keep people out of the square. Mm-hmm. Don't step into the square. So they said, here's what it looks like if he just does it in a very sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, beta male voice very like very politely like uh, don't don't step in my square please don't step please mm-hmm. don't step in my square and people are just trudging right through mm-hmm. and he goes now if i make eye contact and i speak with a deeper voice don't step in my square don't step in my square all no. of a sudden people are like they move around move around like just wow. the shift in tone now the shift in tone is that he could be aggressive and crazy but right. it does mean it does grab your attention for whatever you need that for. Yeah. So how you whip say, out my dick and hold my hand. Yeah. Well, don't <laughs> don't step, step in the square. Don't yeah. step in the square. If you just want to keep them out of the square, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a practical method. Yeah. Automatically speaking, holding your dick in your hand. Yeah. It's a uh, it's it's a weird thing that that like I, I always find uh, comics have a hard time in relationships a lot. And and when they're so good at communicating, it's almost like there's a, a disconnect from. They're good at their half of the conversation. <laughs> um. Yeah, but in order to be funny, you got to pay attention. I think what I, I disagree. Think, what I you think don't, you don't is, think so? I'm a horrible listener. I'm a very unpresent comic. Are you? Are you not? Are you you're not paying, aware? You're paying you're, attention to the audience, though. You're paying attention. I'm paying to attention their to reaction, reaction, but that's not a human thing. That is truly just a little red. Uh, temperature gauge. To sure. Tell me what I'm yeah, I would. Scenes. I would. I'd figure that out. I'm, I, yeah. I think most comics are are good with really the audience because yeah. they, they. But I think it's because comics who are good they, at crowd work. They learn. They learn the trick of being who they have to become for that audience. Yes. Right. But they never actually change themselves within the confines of the relationship. They separate who that is. So some Why? comedians are able to come up with a whole different persona than who they really are. In real life, yes, that's true. That result. That's true. That's true. But I mean, mm. you also. But it's. I always say this as well. Is you know, guys will make a, a make a, a sixteen to twenty year commitment with a puppy, sure, and then they'll make no commitment at all in a relationship in a, in a, in, a, in terms of a human exchange, which is so much more evolved and so much more nuanced. I think that's because guys know literally there's no other option in in the head in your head. And then walking the dog. You have to walk the dog or it'll shit in the house. We don't 
connect that in the same way that right. you have to be, if I, I, I have to pay attention to everything my girl is doing all the time because you go, oh, it'll be fine now for now. I'll, I'll get back to that. I'll get back to that. And you just kind of forget about it. And it, her life still functions without it. But you yeah, don't but realize Not that, really, because what happens is if you, if you leave the dog in the house, you don't walk the dog in the, sure, in the yeah. house. And if you don't, you're not attentive to the needs of your woman, she will shit in the house. Yeah, it just, it's, a, it's an emotional yeah. shit in the we house. We don't make that literal connection, even yeah. though that's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's an emotional thing that we have to provide as opposed to a physical activity. Physical activities are easy to just mark off. I could just throw out the trash and it's it's done. It's right there. It's visual. So you know that it has to be done as opposed yeah. to emotional things. If you're not paying attention. That's something to think about. I, but I think, it, I think it's the same skill. It's just not. It's We don't necessarily. How long have you been with your girl? Five years. Five years. And going well? Going very well. That's dope. Going uh, very well. Yeah. Yeah. Did she. Where'd you meet her at? She's maybe tired of me, but I'm. I'm. I'm still, <laughs> still, in it. still in it. You're still in it. Yeah. We met. Uh, I was a fan of her swimming. We met. I messaged her on Instagram. Oh, okay. her swimming, you said? Yeah, she was a pro swimmer. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Who'd she swim for? Uh, she went to UT. She was a national champion at UT. Wow. Was trained there, post grad. Um, was a. Uh, Are you a big? You Tennessee? swim too? Or no? I was. I I was not a good swimmer. Oh, okay. uh, Texas. Texas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I liked swimming. I was uh, I was manager for the women's swim team at my school. Oh, nice. I, and I swam on the club team. Yeah. Uh, not. I I wasn't good, but I really really liked it. I yeah. Was, I was the Rudy of that sport. Yes. And what what attracts you in that? In terms of, I mean, well, I mean, she's she's got to be small behind. In yeah. Shape. That, I mean, that's but there. Is I mean the function more uh, of the form was is always appealing to me. I always right. think it's like a, I, I I think it's more appealing when a girl has you know a, a body that can do things mm. versus a body that can't do things this but visual. might be yeah. Victoria's Secret look like when I look at the Victoria's Secret girls like, that looks nice but yeah, what yeah. can it do yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> you like a little utilitarian <laughs> yeah it's like it's like someone someone does like a Ferrari kid on their Toyota you're yeah. like yeah but you still got a V6 under yeah. there V4 almost right yeah, yeah. <laughs> just make a lot of, yeah that's interesting but well, I think it's I think and I also was bad at sports and I think it's yeah. a very it is a thing my, my parents reinforced me of like there's some evolutionary thing if I want my kids to be good at sports I want yeah. them to not have my physical deficiencies right Right, right. So right. I'd love I like kids. I like I tall has, women for that reason. Yeah. I want to have tall kids. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. I like a woman who has skills, skill set. Like that's skills. what I'm impressed by. Yeah, I like somebody who's got something, doing something as like opposed to just, just a Oh, I mean, no, not, yeah. I mean, it helps. <laughs> I mean, we do always go, how does this transition into sex? <laughs> well, I mean, that I mean, is the thing. Like, ah, that's a good stroke. She got good form. I bet, you know where else she'd have good form? Yeah. It's not like having sex with an athlete, oh, a female no. athlete. It's a whole nother. Well, I shouldn't say that. What, I said what if do you they think put has, their name, if they put their energy into it, the way they put the passion that they. Who put do you in. think has the best sex? Well, like I what? think I think Serena Ballet? Williams would Serena, kill somebody. Serena Williams. She would. Destroy? She could kill somebody. She she could just kill somebody. Walking out with a neck brace. Yeah. 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 Um. But uh, gymnast. Gymnast, you think? Yeah, I like a gymnast. They have body to have too. both the strength and flexibility. Yeah, and it's just it's always a nice booty. Big legs, you know. I'm like, I think ballet dancers are pretty soccer. Yeah. Soccer, soccer girls are very cute. Really, very I cute also like volleyball that. on the other extreme. Well, I was giving me to say volleyball. But soccer is always I, after I, swimming. Soccer was always very. Yeah, very I could good watch me. volleyball. I could watch women or volleyball. shorter distance runners. The 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 distance runners oh, just the, got too skinny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but the the shorter like the 200, 200, 400, 400 hurdlers, yeah. hurdlers. God on yeah. Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and my follow page started tracking a lot of uh, uh, track and field stars. After you know what? Matthew's porn is on yeah, Instagram yeah. following this. Yeah. Oh, I can show you all the subreddits. Yeah. Olympics is one of them. O H H H L Y M P I C S. Oh, Olympics. We will find uh, a way to. <laughs> Math- Matthew's the only one. Who wants to come you over and I'm watch? Joking, by the way. Who, no, who wants I, to I, watch no. speed skating? You're like, what? Oh, oh, dude, oh my God. Dude, yeah. that's a new thing. Yeah. One of the, 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 the Dutch women from the speed skating team, SS is her name. Those are her initials. Not like the German police. Uh-huh. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I found a couple of them and their bodies are oh, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. They look, their asses just don't fit on their bodies. No, no, and the legs and the thighs. Because, I mean, it's yeah. literally all they work on. It's just it's that. Not just squats. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's yeah. not that. It's not just that. It's just like the, the workout that, that I was telling you to do is the yeah. same thing. It's speed skating is a similar. It's brief, brief, infrequent, uh, high intensity will always 
put muscle on. It'll make you sicker. The muscle fibers need to be thicker. Mm-hmm. The adaptation is to be thicker because if it's not thicker, it'll snap. Yeah. Like, so, you know, how you see a... When and it has a, proper time to recover. I used yeah. to do endurance sports and I was I, like, I was just frustrated that I wasn't stronger. It's like, you break these muscles down at a faster rate that your body can fix them. Yeah. But your body can't fix them very fast. Yeah. I realize yeah. 20 minutes of good exercise a day yeah. Yeah. Is, a, is a solid amount. You yeah. Know, if you don't include breaks. Yeah. And if you... And they're going to adapt to the to the the, the the intensity of of what you do so mm-hmm. when you look at a you look at a, a 100, 100, 100 meter 100 yard dash 100 meter dash the, the legs are so thick same thing like with with skaters mm-hmm. because it's su- such an intense um but it, you know it's it's sort of like if you ever see the fan belts on a drag a drag racing car like Not a funny either. car so the, the fan belts on there are like this thick uh-huh. and the reason why is because it goes from zero to whatever to top speed in two three seconds and then it maintains the top speed for the remainder of the six or seven seconds so there's so much stress it's sort of like when you see a you see a sprinter pop a uh, rip a hamstring it almost looks like they got sniped so it's like pop it just yeah. pops and then they hit the ground. So it's it's the the muscle fibers are adapting to to the the, the, the strength need. of the nick the, the stress that it on the so you're getting these little little fractures not fractures but these strains and stuff and then it's rehealing itself making it stronger adapting micro adapting. tears yes yeah so it's a it's a even that is an interesting thing because I think that happens on a social construct as well. It's like it's either like you, you get into like guys will who will, uh, you know, approach women and talk to them socially. They it, they get turned down, and there's a callous, <laughs> there's almost a callous that kind of develops, mm-hmm. or, or they end up incels because they can't deal with any of the pain, and then they blame find a way to blame it on the woman somehow. This is a topic I would love to discuss with you. Yeah. Stage fright. Yeah. So, uh, I guess, should I give my theory first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. sure. Okay. So, uh, anyone who's at stage fright, which I'm guessing is most people, any kind of fear in talking to a group or even just one person just approaching yeah. a girl to the bar is the exact same feeling you feel at the top of a tall diving board or jumping sure, or skydiving. Sure, sure, board. sure yeah. And it's this, this, hmm. this very animal fear in you. Right. And... Why are they the same? And people, what bugs me about people with stage fright, I shouldn't feel this way. Mm -hmm. And I say, yes, you should. Right. You're about to walk up in front of your tribe Uh and potentially prove to all of them that your gametes are worthy (laughs) or not of continuing on. Right. And you failing to continue your gametes in an evolutionary sense is equivalent to you dying. That's why your testicles are so sensitive. Yeah. Because if you lose them, Darwin no longer cares about you. Right. So that it's a fight or flight, this life or death feeling is, I think, actually a rational part of our development. Sure, so sure. If you are going to fail in front of people, the potential risk is you. Is death. Is, 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 yeah, the death of your DNA, right. which is all you exist to do right. is to well, propagate that, your the, DNA. Or the death of your immortality, because I'm yes. Your 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 immortality is to move your DNA yeah. to the next generation. So as soon as you said it, I was like, it's it's death. It's death. It's it, it is feels death. like it death. is a type of death, and it's and just because it's a social construct of death. Mm-hmm. Like you weren't funny enough, or you weren't good enough. It's still death. It's still death. It makes you undateable. Yeah, you have to maybe move to another tribe <laughs> if you can find one. Yeah, and uh, that's what gets, it makes me angry when, when young young comics are like, "Oh, I'm, I'm nervous, and I shouldn't be nervous." You should. It's absolutely yeah. a yeah. natural. Feeling. Absolutely. And, yeah, absolutely. and, and when you when you tell yourself it's a natural feeling, then you might be able to get over it. Right. Because very smart people they get hit with that feeling and they they think Figure they can tell themselves it's not legitimate Mm -hmm. in making it go away yeah but if it's it's actually a thing i I fight i have with my girlfriend very often where i'll do something that pisses her off and then i'll try to explain to her why her reaction is uh, is 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 irrational she goes it doesn't matter how much sense you make this emotion's still there and you telling me that i shouldn't be feeling this emotion just makes me angrier so there's a thing I always try to remember of logic does not remove. Yeah, it can if somebody will ex- if somebody op- op- operates. Look, I mean, some people the the emotion is present, but if you if you if you consider yourself an intellectual being, you can still have that emotion. But but when the emotion becomes uh, because this is this is what happens. Um, 
I have this emotion and you don't love me enough to understand where I'm coming from. Like we make these, it's almost like we write this script about what the emotion means. We give it a value and we create a whole story behind it. So, and that's what we're angry about. You don't, you um, like, for instance, I, I had a guy, I was, consult I was consulting straight up dude, good, good, good husband, whatever. But he would go out and hang out with his friends. And then when he would call to check in on her, he would always make every, I mean, guys do this and quiet, quiet, quiet. It's almost like he didn't want her to know that he was having a good time yeah. because in her mind, she was, if you, are having fun without me. You don't need. Then you don't need me. Yeah. And then I'm mad at you because you don't need me. It's, yes. It's an. It's a. And but it the happens. problem is that's subconscious. That sure. feeling is subconscious sure. to them. So sure. now you're sure. battling with something that they don't. They're not fully aware of necessarily. Right. Uh huh. So that's it becomes why it's about nice dating a smart person. <laughs> what happened? That's why it's nice dating a smart person it is, who can but examine. I. I but I, it's still the same battle. Like it's, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still the same battle because when you're talking about the emotions, like when, when I have issues with my girl, you know, there'll be times later on she goes, yeah, I was just very emotional about that. And uh, I go, that's great. But do you understand that that means I have to push past your emotions and go with the logic part when you're actively fighting with me because you're emotional? Right. I don't even try to battle logic. Really? I, I, I learned to not do that. I think that's always going to lose. Um, oh, so why don't you just back off it and give it space? Um, I, I, I will get angry sometimes if I, if, if I feel like I'm losing. I mean, there's that, that stupid thing in me of like, oh, if I could just get her to calm down mm. and then I can't and then I get angry and I, mm. I might yell. Um, but it's, the, I tend to get angry making, that, um, that we're in a fight. Why are we in a fight type of thing? Uh, or why I, are we, I, I why does this have to be a problem? If I entertain it now, yeah. she's more likely later to admit Dude, that yeah. it was an irrational thing, which is such a good feeling when okay. she was like, I might've overreacted yesterday. Uh, but you can't tell her that in that moment. And that, I don't think this is just women. I think anyone who has an emotional reaction, I think like men get angry in this way very often. Uh, but, uh, I try to just make sure I understand her emotion and explain sure. to her that I know where it's coming from. Right. And then sorry probably doesn't cut it from there, but if I can at least just make her feel heard, mm -hmm. which is all most people want, is to just feel like yeah. You yeah. Know, you're listening to them. Saying, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. But my, with my girl, I, I mean, did this, which was disrespectful because of this. Yeah. And well, it made you feel this way. That was, that's what I try to go with. With me and my girl, uh, it's become a thing, kind of a joke after the fact, but, even, but it's become real during it where I have to go, you're... The feelings you're feeling are real, but the your your emotions are real, but they're not accurate to what's going on. Yeah, mm. and that's what I have to sometimes say to her, which still doesn't mean it's easy. Like she still has the emotions. Like she's literally going through these emotions. So mm -hmm. it's it's weird in a way because she's not faking it. She's really feeling those emotions. Emotions are very and real. it clouds whatever else is going on because the emotion is real, whether the reason for it is accurate at all. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. The emotion is there. Yeah, I was debating somebody. We were talking about um, who's more emotional, men or women, and everybody would say women. The difference is like men tend to be more emotional when it comes to anger. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> so it's like it's equal, but it's just we we get pissed off. We don't get the other. The, you know, we're not crying and this and that and the other. Be but but there's a so we get shamed for sure. Those there's other an emotions. agency. There's an agency that says that that's not. That's not okay. And because the agency says, it's like, I've said this about, I've, I've said this, you know, you, you, you talk about like a man keeping his word, right? I've never heard the term woman of her word. Yeah. Like nobody used that. So there's almost like a, a, a eject button or, or a, 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 a allowance of this kind of emotional, fickleness which i think can just be abusive a lot of times I, I i can't tell you how many times i've got a guy who's having a problem with his girlfriend and i'm doing a consultation and he'll go but you know she's a hot latina and i go i i don't give a fuck what uh right where she's from the reality is disrespect is disrespect and I think if you're really, uh, I, I, I also feel like if you turn it around the other way, you look at it the other way, it, people, I don't get it. I don't get it. But you don't, you don't like, I have a friend of mine. He's a cop. He's a, he's a captain of the police. 
And he, he was, we were debating like police brutality and whatever. And he was like, well, that's, that's not police brutality. That's protocol. And I go, there's things that are lawful. There's things that are lawful, but they're still awful. Mm -hmm. Just because it's legal to do doesn't make it right. right. And what's, it was really interesting about that is that when I say, would you want your daughter to be tased? Would you like, is that something you would be okay with? Yeah. And then the minute he goes, well, if she was in the same, all right, I'm not having this conversation because now this is not even a good faith argument. Yeah. You know, you, you're lying. You don't want your daughter tased. And so at the last case scenario, you should tase somebody else's daughter yeah. or somebody else's. So it's just really kind of simple when you turn it around. And I, I feel like, uh, I've said this a lot of times in those situations where it's emotional I'm with an emotional woman or, or there's a situation where I go, I, um, I, what do you think I meant by that? Like what, what is up? What, why are you That's upset? A smart move. Yeah. And well, such and such and such. And I go, mm. so you think because I had fun, fun with my friends that I don't love you. Mm -hmm. Like, is, is, is that what I, I just want to, and I'm asking through a Socratic method, I'll ask him, or so you think that you should be able to yell and scream and say whatever you want to say. And I should just listen. I, I have no problem doing that, but I just want you, is, is that what you're looking to do? And then when you, in the scope it's like well you're asking me to engage this analytically now i gotta be honest about it mm -hmm. and if i'm not honest about it i'm not having a conversation anyway you know that that, that it, you we know that that's what it is mm -hmm. and so you admit to it as long as i'm not shaming you and i'm allowing you to communicate in these ways where you can really kind of look at yourself and see what's going on and, and stop be re being reactional and be more active yeah this did make me feel jealous so i did feel a little insecure well what can i do to make you not feel secure insecure about it like yeah. is there something i could do and it usually ends up well you know i, I know i was just blah, 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 blah. and then it, it, it just kind of goes away but the it's really hard for somebody to per perceive you as cold and not listening when you're asking direct questions about like what do you feel yeah. what does this mean to you you know because a lot of times i think they don't even know what it means to them it's just affecting them they did the math he hates me and then the, the anger ensues or he's not listening to me or he thinks i'm not uh, he's not i'm not validated in this situation and, and we all want to be validated in that in that sense you know i agree you want to do the what you want to do that's so you we got five and yeah we got a little bit more time all right yeah and then we'll do patreon okay a little more time okay yeah so um uh, uh, let me argue with what my girlfriend would say to all of this. I okay. feel like that would be fair. Uh, we fought a lot more towards the beginning of our relationship. Okay. Um, and we fought less, which I think is a positive thing. I think that's actually more rare. Uh, and we would have those fights of uh, the, the, the logic. One of the, the best examples of, you know, we were, we got in a fight cause I did a show and I didn't text her. Mm. And uh, she goes, you didn't text me for three hours. And I looked, I go, it's only an hour and 40 minutes. Right. That didn't solve it. Right, 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 right. uh, but a lot of those, you know, the feeling I, the, the word used was disrespect, disrespected, not appreciated. A lot of it was that I put comedy before her. Um, and that's gotten better mostly because she has a job that she's good at. Right. She does stand up now. So oh. totally. Oh, she does stand up. stand up like two years. Now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, and that, true. that helps her now. She doesn't, get as upset when I prioritize comedy to her. Yeah. But the only problem with that is it's, it's, I don't know her and I'm not saying I'm not criticizing her, but it is somewhat selfish human wise that like, no, now I get it. Cause I do Cause it. Cause I do it. Cause I do it. So hey, I can understand it, but I'll take it. I don't yeah, care. I'll yeah, yeah, take it, it's, but it's, it's not a the, criticism of her. It's criticism sure. of human nature. That, I mean, like, if I was dating a musician, I probably wouldn't get their schedule either. And there would probably be sacrifices they made that I didn't know. Without a doubt. Yeah. But, but it's it, the, the, some, the hard part is understanding that without having to do it, you know, like yeah. that's the tricky part. That's the yeah. tricky part. Yeah. You know, so. so when we started dating right at the beginning, she missed an Olympic team that she was supposed to make. So her, her only goal was to be an Olympian and she failed at that despite an amazing, <sighs> otherwise amazing oh, career. Wow. And then she entered the workforce. We moved to New York together. So she spent those first couple years of us together. Are you from <laughs> Texas originally? Yeah. Okay. Not ha her not having this sense of identity. She had this sense of identity that gave That's her a real sense of rough, strength. Man. Yeah. And then she was just, you know, a low level employee 
with no hobbies, no passions. I, I, don't, right. I don't know how you deal with that as a, as it was a boyfriend. Hard. I mean, because I, I've had her hard. lose a pair of shoes that she likes. And if you're like, oh, fuck, I don't know. But to miss the Olympic team mm -hmm. where you got to be there for her, like, yeah. fuck, man, that's yeah. hard. I have a, yeah, it's, um, and, you know? and there were things that were, I, I think disrespect is taken, not given. And she was, I had to be so, so careful to not do things that might slight her, yet I still did. And then when she came into her own new sense of identity and, and felt like she had a thing right. again, I think comedy fills that void that swimming left. Mm -hmm. You can keep, sure, that's find, find the these adrenaline things, keep improving and something yeah. to work at. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something to work at. Just wake up today. How am I going to get better? How can I put in the reps? Um, and, and I think she would argue that a lot of the fights between men and women uh, why men call women crazy is because a lot of women don't get that. A lot of women don't have the same mobility within the workforce. Don't get a sense of identity. They can't go on to be a big athlete or, or a lot of these, these illustrious things that men do. Yeah. And, uh, and that gives in them a, a big sense of insecurity, which is why it's so easy to set them off. And when you give women a more equal playing field in the workforce, and more, sure, more there's a lot to, to deal status. with. Well, I would, yeah. I, men and women might fight less. The only thing yeah. I push back on is that is like, for instance, um, you know Nate, right? Or Mac, Nancy? Mac, Mark and Mac, oh, McIntyre. Oh, yeah, yeah. McIntyre. So oh, I love him. Nate is constant. He's in this place right now where he's constantly bitching about comedy. Like, because he's not... I don't know what he so wants. A lot of comedians go through. Yeah, yeah we, I, I don't think this do. is... I don't, I don't know what Nate's I'm doing. particularly funny, so I get his frustration. Yeah, <laughs> and... Um, and I said to him, I said, you keep looking up to people and places and things that you want, but you never look down to see where you came from, the distance, how far from the distance you are, that that is an accomplishment. And if you constantly, it's not about the finish line. I mean, the, 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 if, the, if, if it was just about the finish line, the fastest joke tellers would be the best comedians. That's just not the case. It's the artistry. Bird would yeah. be at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Yeah. It's the artistry in which we we move through each station and and make people feel emotionally. It's not about speed. Yeah. And and so we always. Oh, I want this and I want that. And now I want this and it's, this is not happening fast enough. When just again we're talking about being present, being present, and and recognizing that this so rare that people get to do the things that they love. That every day we get to do the things that we love and something and something that you really just said about your girl, she's doing something that she can kind of constant. There is no ceiling mm -hmm. to it, how much better you can be and that you can always be creative and and, and push and, and be better. You know, she had that with swimming, but much more asymptotically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you there, you have a physical limit that you get closer and closer to, but and like age the, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that comedy is way, way better. And she has that now, and she we get along. Our fights are not about that anymore. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think what's interesting, but I, I do agree with you saying the fact that you gotta you you don't have the empathy to see what this is. I understand that there is a it is a pretty crazy thing. <laughs> I, I agree. Most that was also why I liked dating a swimmer, a professional swimmer, yeah. because she would understand that I make stupid sacrifices, right. sure, for but stupid yet. prizes, but right. yet, right? She didn't at first. I, right. I mean, she Humanation. most she ninety five percent of the time got. Oh, she did. But every yeah. now and then, while we were on a like on a trip to Paris, I had to sneak out to do an open mic. Right. And, right. and and that might be something. The, the extreme cases were like, did you really have to put that first on this night? Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. But no, most of them, she was she was okay with me just being out every night. But, yeah. most women don't, but you gotta admit if she was if she was a professional swimmer, I mean if she was being a professional and she said to you, I'm gonna go Sorry, to the pool. Sorry, we have to go to sleep gotta, at eight AM. Yeah. I wanna go to I gotta get up and do some laps. You would not have you know you understand you one of the things that you liked about her was the fact that she was a swimmer. Mm -hmm. So her her being having the discipline for that was the thing that attracted you. Right. Which is I'm, the same. There thing. was some craziness that came with it. Like, and, and I'm sure I, I think there were, would have been things about that yeah. that I probably would have been impatient with. Why don't we uh, go to the Patreon? Okay. Let's wrap up and talk the, uh, a little bit more about this on the Patreon. Your, I want to talk about autism on the Patreon. Oh, so let's do right. I want to see how so we get into this. Okay. All, all right. right. All right. Buddy. That's the it. best. Uh, Monday Punday on all platforms and uh, check out my stand up on YouTube. Spell yeah. it.
M O N D A Y P U N D A Y. Oh, dope. Matt, yeah, and, and Matthew's a very funny stand up comedian. Like, Thank I mean, just Harry. great clips all the time. Uh, at Harry Turjanian, that's all my social media. And so, uh, and uh, join us over on the Patreon, and uh, thank you for uh, supporting us, those, and give it a try if you haven't. Uh, Dante Nero, Google me. All my stuff's there. Uh, don't forget the one-on-one consultations at DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Uh, we'll see you on the other side, man. Uh, Patreon, uh, www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Check us out. Support us so we can keep doing this. We are out.